for this here thing to turn out right. So from the start, let's get this one thing clean. You should know what. Hello family, welcome back to another week's video. It's your girl Shauna LaKale. In today's video, we are inside my master bathroom. I have a builder grade bathroom and it is one hot mess and it needed some TLC. I took on this project um, not knowing it was bigger than what I thought. I learned so much about different woods, texture, primers, and paints that it had my eyeballs and my head spinning. I learned that my cabinets are not real wood. It is MDF. It's a medium density fiberboard. That is the um, name of it. And it is common for both furniture and home constructions these days. It is inexpensive engineer wood material composed of um or should i say composite of sawdust and resin and what they do is they fuse it together in a high heat high pressure process and that is exactly what i have and then they put this thermofoil now you're going to hear me say thermofoil a whole lot in this video they put this thermofoil on top of it and see that right there after the years go by that thermofoil will break down and it will start peeling in some places and it came loose in other places and I'm showing you video of what I had to deal with so I took this project on and I just wanted the best cost-effective way that I could do it was to remove all of the thermal foil off of the, um, the MDF boards and start from scratch so what I'm going to do is I am going to remove all the thermal foil off all the doors as I said earlier and what you will need to remove it is simply to heat it up. Now I was told you can do a hair dryer or heat gun. My husband has a heat gun so I just went on and used what we already had and it worked perfect for us. So what you do is you just heat the um, the the thermal foil up and it will then come off. But as you can see, I have so many areas. I don't even have to heat it up. All we had to do was just yank some of the stuff off and it was just coming off real easy. So today is demolition day and I asked my girlfriend Tanya to come over and help us out or help me out should I say. And what we did is all we had to do was just heat up around the edges first and then it will um, automatically start you know loosening up and the thermal foil will just start peeling right off the surface. And just like that, see how I'm going along the um, corners and um, up to the top of the sides of it. And then once, see how it's starting to peel away? It just loosen up and it comes right off real simple and easy. So we didn't have too many difficult areas to um, take the thermal foil off. It just really popped right off because this is 16 actually 17 years of this thermal foil that has been on here and as i said over the years it definitely breaks down and it just starts coming off so simple and easy and that's all you have to do to remove it as i was removing the thermal foil off the doors i noticed my doors were in excellent shape i was really pleasantly surprised the finished of it because all the research that I kept reading about on the internet it was mentioning um, you got to do some sanding and you have to be very careful and you got to use a certain grade of sanding sandpaper because you don't want it to start crumbling so I was like oh my god what am I getting myself into but I was pleasantly surprised at the finish of these um, you know, of my cabinet doors as well as the drawers. Um, now, I read where they say you can replace your thermofoil, thermofoil doors. And I was like, I don't want to replace it or put any uh, more thermofoil on it. 
I don't want to have to go through this again. If I have to do anything, it would be touch up paint. I don't want to have to do this. And as I said, I was trying to find the most cost effective way that I can be able to do this and still get a high end professional look. As Tanya and I were uh, removing the thermal foil off the cabinets, we kept saying to ourselves, and why would they put the thermal foil over these nice cabinets? The finish is just really nice. And we just kept taking it off. And I'm just knowing we're going to find an area that is, you know, that's not finished properly. But everything was finished properly. To me, it would have been simple and easy if they would just go ahead and paint the cabinets white versus putting the thermal foil on it. But maybe that's how it, it's manufactured and it comes like that. After we finished getting all the thermal foil off the cabinets, um, it was getting late and um, I just did all the cleaning up, put them in two bags. It, it was a uh, work night so Tanya and I both had to go to work the next day so after she left I just went on and cleaned up the cabinets with some denature alcohol making sure I get any stickiness off of it and it really helped I didn't soak the rag I just enough just to clean it down and wipe it down and let it air dry overnight and the next day when we got off from work um, Tanya came back over and that's where we decided we're gonna go ahead and you know add the primer so I went to Sharon Williams and I spoke about these young ladies before in another video where they will help me uh, find the paint that I need. So this is where I learned so much information about primers and I had to use an oil base. I could not use water because of the, um, the MDF uh, wood. It soaks up so much and you definitely don't want to use a water base. You have to use an oil base. Um, primer and what we did we just went and taped everything off and the young ladies uh, when I was at Sharon William they had this 40% off sale so it was just perfect timing for everything for me to do this and she was telling me all I need was a quart of paint but I really thought I needed more and the quart of um, primer was perfect but for what we needed for the cabinets when we got ready to paint I needed more so I went back and I did get more and you'll see that and I'll share that with you as well a little later on in the video but um, I everything is by Sharon Williams I told her I said I want to make sure I have the best roller I said I've never done this before I'm so nervous I mean I really am nervous about doing this because I'm not a painter. This ain't. This is not my profession. I'm gonna stay in my lane. But I stepped out on faith, y'all, and I'm very proud of what I did and trying to, um, uh, you know, get this renovation done in my bathroom. So the emerald, she said, our emerald is the best paint we have, and she said we don't put it at forty percent off that often she said so this is a good time to get it so I'm glad I did pick that up and then we got the oil base primer and Tanya was um she she paints more than I do I do spray paint but Tanya she likes to paint and I knew if I got her over here she'll help me and build me up with my confidence that I need that I can do it so I was went and picked up these little um, containers to pour the paint in. I wish I never did got them because we really didn't need that. I should have got the longer one, which I end up going back to um, uh, Lowe's and getting the um, longer pan. But you know, you learn as you go, and that's exactly what I did. So um, these little sponge um, rollers, they work perfect. I mean, they just make everything go on nice and smooth. So all, as I said, all the um, cabinet doors and drawers are all prepped and ready. And um, we went on and Tanya started shaking it up. She said, girl, come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I said, Tanya, you go first. I'm gonna let you do this. So um, we got the paint all set up and Tanya went on and got down there and start, um, you know, rolling the paint out of the primer for us on the thing so I just watched her I wanted to kind of get an idea what to do because I, I didn't know what I was doing and I really didn't want to mess up
So as I watch Tanya rolling the primer on the cabinets, I start building my confidence up and I was like, okay, Tanya, all right, when, once you're done with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try an area. So I said, how about if I try maybe one of the draws? So she said, yeah, I think that'd be easy for you to do. Go ahead and try one of the draws. So after she did that, she just, you know, built my confidence up. She said, Shauna, you can do this. You can do this. I mean, she was just walking me through it. So what you're going to see me doing is I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. And I think I was putting way too much primer on my roller and I was trying to get the primer, you know, some of it off. But um, I was nervous putting it on there. And after I had did the first draw, all of a sudden, my confidence took over and it just made me feel comfortable. Look how I was just putting, I, I didn't feel comfortable doing this at all. And I didn't, but after I finished this, I was like, okay, Shauna, you know you can do this because you got to do this. We got to do it. And I just kept on playing around with it. And all of a sudden, it just started coming after I finished making a big mess of this. And I'm, I kept this in here because I want to let you know it's okay. That's how you learn. You have to practice. And once you practice and you get a feel for it, it's going to start coming like nature. And you're going to really, your groove, you're going to be like Stella got her groove back. And um, you're just going to, it's just going to start flowing real good for you. While I was adding the primer, I kept remembering what the lady told me at Sharon Williams. She said, make sure you cover your surface all over. She said, take your time. And she said, make sure you get into the grooves. Make sure you get on all four sides of the, the cabinet door or the drawers. And I'm just making sure I get that roller in all those areas to put that primer and she said just go back and forth go back and forth with it and that's what I remember her telling me to do so I was just telling Tanya what the lady was saying so just make sure you take your time and you make sure you cover your surface real good and just rub that primer in there real good because the primer is key that's what's going to allow the paint when you get ready to paint for the paint to stick. Now look at me. I got my groove, baby. Shauna got her groove going. I'm just at it. I, I was in my own element and I'm just moving along and everything is just working, working, just working for my good right here. I feel, I feel good. I'm just rolling and rolling and rolling. Tanya said, girl, you got this. Now that we have all the primer on the surfaces, what I chose to do, I allowed this to sit for two whole days to dry and cure. I was in no rush. So once it had dried, I called Tanya back over and I said, hey, let's go ahead and let's start, um, you know, painting. And she came back and that's what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the first coat of paint to um, one of the doors as a sample. I just want to see how it turns out, how it's going to look.
as Tanya was adding the first coat of paint onto the door, I noticed the paint was not covering as good as I thought it would. And she said, that's why we have to add, you know, maybe a second or even a third coat of paint over it to get the coverage. And I was like, yep, you're right. You're right. So I'm going to be perfectly honest. I was not feeling how the paint was coming out on the door, but after we got it on, it did start to look okay. And we just kept on going. So you'll see where I'm just constantly just rubbing the paint in, just trying to make sure I get a even coverage on the door and making sure that I leave no areas untouched. I allowed the paint to dry and I'm gonna be honest again I still was not feeling it so I told Tanya I said you know what I am going to go back to Sharon Williams and I'm going to meet with the girl and I'm going to take this one with me and let her see how it turned out it was just too dull when um, when I took it to her I just didn't like it so she then um, played around with the color and this is the color that we got, the one that's 251. And she said it's gonna have a slight sheen to it. And that's what we got. So after she mixed that all up, this is the one right here. See how dull it is after it's dry? So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and paint over it and give it a nice sheen. So I'm just wiping it down and I'm adding that new paint to it. And this is the paint. This is a little better. It gives it a much better sheen for me. And I'm really feeling this one. So I went and I started painting all of them. Tanya had already done left because she had somewhere else to go. And that was okay. Um, I just start painting all of the draws. I just brought them on outside here on the deck. And I was just in my own element, just painting away, you guys. I really enjoyed, you know, sitting outside and just painting. And everything went real smooth and easy from here on. Once I finished painting all the drawers and the doors, I came back inside the bathroom and finished painting inside. What I did is I allow all my paint to dry and then I will go back and I will put another coat on it. I want to say I may have put three to four coats of paint on. I'm a perfectionist and I want it to look right. I want the paint to be on there the way it's supposed to be. If I saw any type of um, like a, a little opening of some white paint somewhere I'll go back and take my brush and I'll go back and you know just go over it so just take your time and don't be in a rush and enjoy your masterpiece of what you're creating because it's truly a masterpiece for me so I, as I said I allowed everything to dry for several days now I am working on my um, pull out draws 
I have so many of them. Um, my side has more than Mark's side did. But look at this mess that I made. I made a big mess where I have the um, primer as well as the paint um, just dried on there coming over. It's a spillage. So you remember I was telling you I used that denature alcohol in the beginning to clean off the um any stickiness well this denature is also great for cleaning up any spills and I love it it's perfect to um, use and clean around so what I'm going to do I'm taking this denature alcohol and I'm rubbing it around the perimeter of where I'm going to go ahead and clean and I'm going to also use a scraper that has a razor on it these two together they are awesome. They really are a partner in crime. And I'm a, I'm very particular. I have a sign on my desk that says every job is a self-portrait of the person who did it. Autograph your work with excellence. And I was like, if I paid somebody to do this and they left this like this, oh, I'm going to be very pissed and upset. So I want to take that same concept and um, and apply it. So what I'm doing is using that scraper now to um, remove any over spilled paint that has spilled over onto the white side. Look at that. It comes up. So I got the first little layer up. I'm going to go ahead and take my rag that I have the denature alcohol on and I'm going to go ahead and rub it again and loosen that layer up until I'm able to get a nice crisp clean line going across and that's exactly what I'm doing just going back at it until I get all of that overspill of dried on paint removed around that whole perimeter now it's tedious but it's also satisfying and I know I'm a little quirky but that's who I am I take pride in what I do I'm not just going to just throw something together. I know how my husband and I are and we he would be so upset with me. Why did you leave that paint like that? Why didn't you get this cleaned up? And I would have said the same to him if he was painting. So um, we kind of know each other and I knew this was very important. So I just took my time one day and I went through each and every one of the doors as well as the pull drawers and I went around the perimeter and I removed all of the overspill paint. And look how nice and sharp the lines are. Looks very professional. I know I've been missing a little here and I do want to take this time to just thank all our family members for being so patient with me and Mark. Um, I want to first say thank you for um, the birthday wishes as well as thank you for all the sympathy um, messages that you left, the heartfelt messages. I greatly appreciate y'all and the uh, loss of my sister. And also we have reached 8K. Yes, guys, we are 8K strong. Thank you so much. And I want to welcome all of our new family members uh, to my channel. And if you are stopping by for the first time, I want to welcome you. Thank you for clicking on today's video. And I'm excited to have you here. I'm looking forward to reading your uh, comments and again thank you for being so patient with me as we try and get this video out to you are you following me on IG well if you are then you know that I shared a little snippet of me autographing my work I like to share reels and stories this way you get to know what's going on behind the scenes you get a little sneak peek of what to expect over here from IG. So go ahead, give me a follow and join our family over there. I'm under Florida girl living in a Georgia world. I love to have you there and let's connect that way as well in between my videos.
And if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. That would definitely help my channel out and it will tell YouTube to push it out to other YouTubers like yourself. Now look at that. All it did was took some time and now my um, draw is all nice and clean. I took the same concept and I came back into the bathroom. I remember I had some spillage in there inside the cabinets. Don't leave this in there like that. Go ahead and clean it up. Take your time and do the job right. So I just use my denature alcohol and I used the razor and I got it all cleaned up. Any over spillage of paint must go. I hope you find these tips very helpful and useful when you do take on your project. I promise you, you'll thank me later. Now that I have all the paint spill cleaned up, I have now put back the drawers and the doors and the knobs on them. And I'm giving you an overview of what the um, what my cabinets look like. When I walk into my bathroom, I feel like it was professionally done. Like I paid a contractor to come in and do this. I'm very proud of what I've done. I gotta give myself kudos. Shauna, you did a very good job. You knocked it out the park. And I, I, I'm gonna take a bow on this one. I really am proud of what I did. And um, when you do this, do your work with excellence. That's what I say, take your time and do it right. Well, I was talking to my husband and I told him, I said, when I come in the bathroom sometimes, I feel like it's not complete. And I said, we definitely need to do something with our mirrors. We got to elevate these mirrors. They have to match the cabinets. They have to have that same energy going. And he said that that'll be fine. I said, because I keep seeing all this black lines going around the perimeter of our mirrors and I did some research and I was told it is called mirror rot and this could happen over the time of years from moisture and I believe that's what we have and they say it happens to all mirrors so I know I have a lot of mirror to cover and the the most cost effective way for us to fix this is to DIY and do a trim a frame going around the perimeter of the mirrors. This will definitely fix the problem. So we're going to head to Lowe's and we found this pro pack of wood. It is already have the primer on it and all we need to do is um, cut it to size and paint it. We made it back home. Mark has pulled out his boy toys and he is on his way to starting these, um, cutting the frames for our mirrors. Make sure you measure twice, I'll say three, four times, just to make sure you have your measurements correct. That way you do not make any mistakes and you will have everything on point. So that's what Mark doing. I mean, he has measured back and forth, back and forth, uh, making sure he didn't mess up because this is the first time he was doing it. He said that um, it would be best for him to cut it. And then he wanted me to go ahead and paint them. He said it would be so much easier, Shauna, if you paint them first versus me putting it together and then trying to paint it because trying to turn the thing over and he was so right. I'll tell you, 
Sometimes you just got to listen to your husband. And um, I'm glad I did. I went on out there after he finished cutting all the pieces for all the mirrors um, for my side as well as for his side. I went on and I painted them using that same black paint that I purchased from Sharon Williams. I wanted everything to match perfectly and it did. So you'll see that coming up where I do share some footage of me you know, painting those, um, those frames that will go around the um, mirror. I took the wood pieces that Mark cut and I took them outside and I placed them on these wood blocks. By placing them on the wood blocks, this allows me to be able to paint all of those wood pieces for him for the frame and without anything touching. And I like this little setup. And this is how I do it for one side. And then once I'm finished with one side, I let it dry completely and then I will flip it over and I would um, do the other side. Very important, make sure that you paint both sides of the frame it's because remember the mirror is a reflection and it will see any imperfections or any paint that you did not paint properly Well, it's time for Mark to go ahead. He's um, going to go ahead and put the frames together. He has his wood glue, the clips, his staple gun, as well as his staple nail gun. And he's going to be also using his square. I've seen him use it many times on different projects that he's doing around the house. He always used that square. By adding a frame to the mirror is a game changer. It's exactly what the bathroom needs to give it a complete cohesive look. It's popping and it is everything. As I was watching Mark put this together, I was just saying to myself, I keep like, wow, you, it really takes some skills to do this. The math, knowing how to cut at these um, 45 degree angles and seeing how they definitely come together and they match up perfectly. That is awesome. And I was just picturing how this is going to look around the mirror. I'm just looking at him putting the pieces together and it just really going to turn out nice. I, I can't wait for you guys to see the final um, reveal of my bathroom because I must say it really turned out nice. I left him there and I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go into my bathroom. And I just wanted to kind of wipe down uh, the bathtub and the window just to kind of get some things cleaned up because I am going to decorate this space for you as well. You know, I just can just do the bathroom and don't put any decorations in there. Yeah, I'm coming back with some decorations. So there's some little satisfying cleaning motivation for you. Well, it took Mark a couple days. We do work, everyone, so um, we have to do this in our spare time. And we greatly appreciate you being very patient with us. So what I am doing right now is I'm cleaning 
the mirror because I want to make sure that there are no dust bunnies because we are going to use double sided tape on the frames so that they can stick to the mirror and I just want to make sure I have nothing there that will prevent it from sticking properly. One of the things we took in consideration was the brackets that holds the mirror up. Mark was making indents there. That way the brackets can fit right in there when we put the frame over it. Now I'm just showing you an overview. We put the tape down. It's double sided tape. We are using black tape, not white. Be careful. It, based on the color what you're using, you want to make sure because as I told y'all before, the mirror shows a reflection of the other side. So you want to make sure that it's not visible. Make sure you dry fit the frame to the mirror. You want to make sure everything is lining up properly. That way you don't have no errors, no mistakes before you actually secure this. Dry fit it one, two, three, how many times you need to. And if you feel you need to carve some more out, carve some more out. So now we're going to go ahead and put the mirror up and I'm just waiting for Mark to get it in place and I'm going up there and I want to make sure that those little indents that he uh, made that they go over the bracket before we actually start pressing the frame to the mirror because that double tape is not forgiving. I'm telling you, it really sticks and holds. So just be very careful when you're doing this part. Make sure that when you're ready to put it up there, that you're ready. Make sure everything is lined up and it's even. Now we are moving over to my side. I have two large mirrors. It is called a bifold mirror. It is when two large mirrors are butting one another on two walls above the sink and the vanity. And just framing these mirrors make a impact. So we are um, framing them individually. And it took a little bit longer, so I didn't record this. But you are seeing where he's going back and checking just to make sure that the mirror is... Um, you know, the frame is on the mirror properly. So what I want to do is just take you back to the very beginning of what the bathroom looked like using this we had this build a grade bathroom um, with thermal foil on it and it was just peeling apart and I want you to see from this to what we have now which I call it a little luxury spa bathroom. When I walk into my bathroom I feel like I have walked into a nice spa retreat. I have created my little oasis for Mark and I. I have my cute little spa station where I have my Epsom salt, bath bombs, my little bar of soaps, as well as some candle lights to set the mood, I, the curtains, the artwork. Oh gosh. Also the, um, the bathtub caddy tray, just really nice. I just really love how everything is set up. I don't think I overdid anything. I have it really nice with matching, um, coordinating towels to match the towels that's over the tub. I kept that color scheme going through in here and it just really looks nice in here. Now look at that bifold mirror. Look at the frames around it. Oh, Mark, you did a great job. You knocked it out the park, honey. I love you and I thank you for helping me make our spa. Now, look at my Mika texture pot. I just love that pot. Isn't she gorgeous? She's so beautiful. 
very detailed and I think I styled that very nicely and I just put it right there I didn't want to overdo this space over here and then on Mark's side I kept it very simple and I add some greenery towel as well as um, I brought that same color scheme on his side and look at his frame going around his mirror look at those beautiful cabinets this looks very professionally done. I'm very, very pleased with how everything turned out and I could not ask for anything else. This is perfect. So I hope you are enjoying the video and if you did, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and make sure you like the video, share the video, comment, and I am looking forward to reading all of your comments in the uh, comment section below. Thank you for being so patient and waiting for me to um, get this video out. And I thank you for your loyal support. It means so much to me. You guys know how much I appreciate you. And remember, if you have an IG account, follow me over there. You'll get to see a whole lot more as well. You have a blessed week and I'll see you in my next video. And by the way, drop me some black and gold hearts in the comments. Thank you.